So, to let them have enough time to talk, because I know they've got a lot of questions um, and a lot to discuss this morning, I'm going to hand over to Tamar Beck, CEO at Glean In, and they are talking risk-taking, entrepreneurship, and female founders, a discussion hosted by Women in Exhibitions. So, Tamar, over to you guys. Hi, well, welcome everybody. Thanks for joining our session today, and I've got an amazing panel of, of women in events. And today we're going to talk to you about um, the businesses that um, we've set up and, and the challenges and the, um, the, the good stuff that's happened as part of that process. So first of all, just want to introduce the panel to you. So we'll start with Sam. Hi, I'm Sam Willoughby. I um, have been in events for, oh God, over 20 years, a very, very long time. I'm that old. Um, and I started my career at um, Informa as a marketing exec. Um, was there for about four and a half years and then moved on to Reed Exhibitions where I finished as an event director and then went on to set up my own company, Lime Events Limited, which is um, an event that runs wellbeing events and I have been doing that for the last nearly four years. So that's me. And on to Narmeen. Hi, I'm Narmeen and I run Desert Island Events. So previously I was, I've been in the industry, I don't want to say 20 years, but I did start when I was 16 on and off. Um, and after the, the pandemic, I started a podcast and then started freelancing and suddenly I, here I am with an events agency um, working all things corporate. And on to Laura Lee. Hello, I'm Laura Lee White. Um, I run Spectrum Speakers and Entertainers. Um, I've worked in the event industry for 15 years. Um, started out working uh, as an experiential events manager um, and then sidestepped into talent, um, heading up true crew talent, uh, which was like corporate, um, corporate entertainment, um, and uh, sidestepped again into speakers, uh, which I've been doing for the last uh, last four years. So yeah, so now um, now I run Spectrum Speakers and Entertainers. And finally, last but not least, Kate Disley. Hi, my name is uh, Kate Disley. I'm CEO and founder of Tembo. I have also worked in the uh, events industry for over 20 years. Um, so I started Tembo about eight years ago now, and it has uh, grown uh, from being a recruitment agency where we match experienced event marketing contractors with event organizers. Uh, we also now have uh, an event marketing agency, and we also provide uh, experienced uh, conference producers as well. Um, so yeah, we've got a team of like 15 now, um, and we have a, an office in Boston. So uh, hopefully you'll agree to a great experience, a lot of experience up here. So we're going to get straight down to the, to the questions. So um, let's, um, let's first talk about what motivated you to leave your, your paid employment and set out on your own. So let's, let's, um, let's go to uh, Laura Lee for that question. Thank you, Tamar. Um, so for me, the, the pandemic was a real big catalyst for me to just kind of look introspectively and think about what my values were uh, within my life and within my business and whether or not those were aligned. Um, inclusivity and diversity were a big part of that um, and that I didn't feel was being represented enough in what I did. Um, after the George Floyd murders as well, it was a, it really was an eye opener for how complicit I was being by uh, by not contributing to inclusive work practices. So I looked around for companies, for speaker agencies that were focusing on diverse talent, but not just speakers who talked about diversity. I thought that was really important, um, and at the time I couldn't find any, so. Uh, I decided to start my own, and that was where Spectrum Speakers was born. And let's, and Kate, what about you? Um, I had been at a big event organizer for about 10 years, and I had had a little girl. I was a single mum. I was trying to pay a mortgage, I was trying to pay childcare, and uh, with discussions internally, there was just no. There was no route for me to make uh, money, the money that I needed to survive. Um, 
So I was lucky enough to then take voluntary redundancy around that time. And so it felt like a natural progression. It didn't feel like I necessarily made a choice. It just kind of happened. And I started contracting and uh, the idea for the business kind of evolved from the contracting. Um, again, never really looked back. And uh, Nami? I want to say I didn't have a choice because I was made redundant in the pandemic. Um, but since then, um, I like discovered the world of freelancing and then it sort of just felt like natural progression, really. Um, but similarly, I was already looking to leave. So as Laura Lee said, I was also experiencing similar issues with diversity, inclusivity, and not generally being very, very unhappy where I worked. And I wanted to change that for the better. And Sam? Gosh, um, I'd been at um, Read Exhibitions for a very, very long time, um, had some great opportunities and learned an awful lot, but I um, was experiencing I'd almost a bit of burnout, really. I had two young children working 40, 50 hours a week, getting to the point that really didn't have that work-life balance and just thought something needed to change. Um, so I decided to leave and have a bit of a break, but um, that break only lasted about four weeks because one of my um, old clients, we'd had lunch um, a couple of weeks before I'd left Reed, and they came, we had a discussion about why don't you set up your own events company? And I thought, oh my God, I don't think I could do that. And he, he asked me why, why couldn't I set it up? What was all the things that were stopping me? So money, the fact that I wouldn't be getting um, a salary. Um, and a couple of weeks into my time off, he came to me and said, how about you set up your own events company? I will invest in you to do that. So I couldn't really say no. Um, and that's, that's why I set up Lime Events Limited. Okay, so um, I think one of the key things we wanted to cover today was how, how did these women actually get their businesses off the ground? And so an important question for, for everybody here who's thinking about doing the th same thing is how did you fund? How did you get yourself off, off the ground? Um, so let's, let's uh, talk to Laura Lee and say, how, how did you do that, Laura? Sure, so um, I am totally self-funded. Uh, initially, it was suggested to me that I should uh, create a business plan and look to get investment. Um, and as I was going through that process, uh, I just kind of freaked out a little bit. I didn't like that level of extreme structure and framework. I found it really limiting. Uh, it didn't give me much room for flex. Um, I also decided that I didn't actually want to be beholden to an investor while I was figuring out what my business was going to look like. Um, yeah, I just, I just needed that flexibility. So um, I found mentors, people who had kind of trodden the path before me, and they were able to give me advice on, uh, on, on, yeah, on what I could do. So um, yeah, I've, I've gone down the kickstart route. Um, so I can afford an employee. <laughs> Hasn't actually happened yet, but that's uh, that's coming. Um, and I um, and, and I have somebody who freelances for me as well. But um, yeah, essentially, I just figured out what my biggest costs were, focused on funding that, um, and then everything else would would be covered once the business is up and running, which is which is what's happened. So that was quite lucky. <laughs> and um, Kate. How did you how did you get started? Um, so a little bit of a combination really. So I worked as a contractor at the beginning and I didn't really need much money to get off the ground at the beginning. It, and, um, and I would say that that's that's one thing to think about. You, you feel like you need a lot of money. You don't. You can if you're um, operating yourself, you you will bring in the money as if you are uh, working in a in a job. So. Um, I didn't really need much money at, at the beginning, but I did have a business partner who worked more as a, a mentor. Then he did put some money uh, into the business, which I didn't quite know what to do with at the time. Um, but eventually I got an administrator just to help me with the paperwork that freed up some of my time. Then further down the line, I have taken bank loans rather than getting investment just because that was the easier route at the time and I in hindsight I have looked back occasionally and thought maybe I should have got an investor but 
as you start, your business starts to become more successful, the thought of actually then having to hand over the profit to somebody else who hadn't put the work in um, seems less attractive. So I'm, I'm quite comfortable without the investment at the moment. However, you do go through stages as your business grows, like the first time that you employ people, when you first get your office, when you do need an injection of cash and it's just it's just how you manage that and there are lots of different ways to do it um, I don't know if there's necessarily a best way and um, before we move on to the next question Sam's one of the only people on the panel that actually launched her own ex event so I think it's fair to say you've mentioned that you had you had an outside investor that is uh, to do to do launch an event without an investor would be pretty tough. I think we'd all agree, right? Um, the rest of us have all launched our own um, businesses that serve the events industry. So, I am launching events. I so don't oh. say that. <laughs> there you go. So, no, I mean, you, you're self-funded as well, though, aren't you? Yes, I at am. At the moment. Yeah, I am. So. Um, originally, when I launched the podcast, I didn't know what I'd do with it, so I'd registered it as a business as well. Hindsight, that was a very smart move, because when I started freelancing and I had got my main contract back in February, all of that money was just going straight into my business account. And really ashamed to say that I had no idea, no clue with finances, and I only paid myself my first salary on Monday. It is November, I am aware of that. Um, but yeah, so I was completely self-funded. So when I decided to change and like create an agency, it was all self-funded with all of the work that I've done this year. The only funding that I have sort of had is through the Kickstart scheme. Again, that took me ages to get on board with, but I can safely say I've had Kickstarters for two weeks now that are sat in the audience, <laughs> um, which like really, really helped because of the amount of work, some of the work that's coming on and the event that I might be uh, starting. There we go. <laughs> yeah. Sam, did you want to add anything to that, or we? Um, yeah, I did have an investor, I don't know. Um, so I've kind of gone through, I was lucky enough to have an investor, they, um, we employed staff, I had an office, I had all this money thrown at me. Um, and due to COVID, um, they pulled their investment. That's a bit of a longer story. So now I am self-funded, but I am, I've had a loan um, and I've got um, people working for me that have um, stakes in the business now um, and so I'm just um, learning how to do the business in a very, very different way and pivoting what I do. So I've kind of gone to the 360 um, of the business and there, there are pros and cons in, in both but my God, I've learned a lot, that's for sure. So um, let's... Before we get on to all the good stuff, let's just cover off some of the biggest hurdles or challenges that you faced during this time of launch and are probably still facing uh, given the environment. So let's start with Kate. Yes, yeah, so um, it's, <laughs> it's, a, it's, it's been a roller coaster. So I, I think I had a conversation with my business partner a couple of months ago and I said, like, when does it when do you start to feel kind of safe and the stress goes away? And he did say to me, well, that, that just never happens. It is constant. It's how you deal with it and how you turn that energy into something positive to keep you motivated and keep moving on. But the hurdles have been kind of understanding um, money. Uh, money was a bit of a, a, a challenge area for me, actually becoming a salesperson and becoming commercial. It wasn't something that came naturally to me, so uh, I've had to do a lot of personal work for myself around that. Um, and then cash flow is always the biggest hurdle, is making sure that you're getting paid and other people are getting paid. Um, that, that's, that's been the biggest hurdle. And just being a little bit savvier and a little bit um, more selfish about that. And um, Laura Lee? Um, for me, like, because my business is still relatively new, the biggest challenge was trying to know where to start. <laughs> there's all of these things that I didn't really know about. You know, there's, you know, tax and templates and structure and websites and, uh, yeah, just all of, all of that. Um, in addition to lots of limiting beliefs, 
that I had to kind of get over. Um, yeah, yeah, because of the kind of changes that I'd gone through in my career, I wasn't really sure whether or not I could do it. You know, I'd, I'd somehow like found this strength to, you know, to leave my job and do it. And then when I, once I was there, I was like, no, no, I can't do this. So, um, so again, just kind of going back to, uh, you know, working with mentors to help you unpick those those things and uh, yeah, and and just figure out what are the things that I need. What are the things that I needed to focus on? What was I good at? What could I let go of actually? Like, you know, when you're trying to save money and you think, oh, I'll do this website myself or I'll do the bookkeeping myself. It's just not worth it. Like whatever money you have, pay people who know what they're doing to do that. Don't try and do it all yourself. And Narmeen? Definitely like, I've only been going like technically two months since I've launched the agency. Um, again, I just mentioned that I did payroll for the first time on Monday, which is fun. Like ha having to learn and navigate like all the government side of things, like the actual fin financial bits and everything is like was really really like hard to like learn. And yeah, definitely get people to do it for you. And um, like I built my website last year. I actually built all three of my websites last year by myself. I never want to do that again. Um, still need to get a brand new website done. Uh, if anyone knows anyone, um, but yeah, definitely like learning the whole fi financial side, like reconciling accounts, learning how to do payroll. Like luckily, like I know how to do it now, and it's like easy, and it's just like the three of us. But there's like a lot more like to it, and like learning the admin side because it's because it's not just you know we all work in events, we know how to do events. It's like oh no, but you've also got all of this additional admin on how to run a business as well now. So. That's been the hardest thing, and also definitely a bit of imposter syndrome. Like, shit, I didn't have a job last. Year. Sorry, am I allowed to swear? Um, shit, I didn't have a job last year. Like, and who am I now to like launch my own agency? It's like, yeah, it's those limiting beliefs and imposter syndrome do kick in as well a lot. Yeah, I think that's a bit of a theme for all of us, right? About that, getting that confidence, confidence that you do know what you're talking about, especially if you've worked, like, probably the. Um, some of the older ones on the panel who've had um, jobs and careers for many years, you, the confidence kind of gets sucked out of you and it takes a lot to get your confidence built up that you can actually do this stuff. So Sam, um, what about you? Biggest challenges and hurdles you overcome? Yeah, it, I mean, it, it was COVID and losing my investor. Um, I mean, there was lots of challenges, but those two, because um, it, I had done my second year of my festival, so I, my launch plan was happening, I was getting to the point that I could see the next year when I was going to be breaking even, making a profit, and I just delivered my event just as COVID hit, so it was a bit quieter than it was supposed to be. Then we went into lockdown, and that following weekend, my investors pulled everything, lock, stock, and barrel. Um, so, yeah, that was a bit of a shock um, as COVID hit as well. So I had to work out what I was going to do with the business, um, how I was going to pivot the business and make money when we weren't doing face-to-face -face events, what I was going to do with my team. It was all, yeah, all a massive challenge. But, you know, 18 months later, I'm still here. I'm still doing events. I've done a couple of face-to-face -face events for um, some brands. Um, so, yeah, it's, um, yeah, very challenging, but still loving it. I guess the main thing is there's going to be hurdles always like we learn with covid who knows what's around the corner but you but you can deal with it um so the the best bit i think as a business owner is what what have you found the highs to be and i think there are lots of highs in going out on your own and, and being in control of things so let's start with Namin for being, you what have the up. highs be being asked to do this panel <laughs> um i think a lot of my highs came just before I decided to launch as an agency and it was one of the things that helped me decide. So we, we, I know we were talking about imposter syndrome and I should probably like talk about this more, but I won two awards like this year and then I was like, okay, maybe I can do this. Um, so the highs were definitely, you know, winning those awards and, you know, finally like getting a team on board it just all started to feel a little bit real like oh it's not just me like oh we, I, I have a proper company now I think so those were definite highs and also like you know getting more inquiries in and obviously working on secret top secret events and maybe 
starting soon. So the definite highs, you know, were there. And also, I think the supportive community that we have in this industry. Last year, a lot of us like came together, and even now, like other agency owners are so supportive of me, like me. Like they'll just like give me help, advice. It's like very much not a competition. So I think it's definitely been a high that to have like all this support around me as well. And what about you, uh, Laura Lee? Um, yeah, I, th I think for me the dream is just seeing everything come to fruition. It's like, yeah, it's it's happening. Like it's actually actually happening as as I envisioned it, as I planned it, in the way that I wanted it to. Um, yeah, it's just it's just been really wonderful. And like you, understanding that that I can do it, that I am doing it. Um, yeah, it's been fantastic. You, you said to me yesterday, it's like seeing your dream. Yeah. Um, and that's an amazing feeling. And Kate? Um, so lots of highs. And I think one, one of the things is actually, as a business owner, is stopping and savoring those highs when they happen and not waiting for the next thing to trip you up. It's kind of like, actually, no, this, this, is, this is a good moment. Um, so we've had, we've had quite a lot because we've been going quite a long time now. But first, when I got opened my certificate of incorporation, that was fab. Um, I still remember that. Um, when, we, when I employed my first person, when I got the office, um, we won an AEO award, which, you know, again, I brought on that whole imposter syndrome feeling. It's like, who am I to win this? Um, but yeah, there are so many highs. And, and the, the point is, you're in control and you reap the rewards. It's, it's, all, on, it's all on you. And it's, it's a lovely feeling that, you know, it's terrifying, but it's a lovely feeling when, you know, you get it right. And uh, Sam? Uh, I think it was probably was once I'd launched the festival and it was actually happening. And I, was, I remember standing, I was in Old Billingsgate, standing along the balcony on the top, looking down and thinking, bloody hell, I actually did this event. I came up with this idea from nowhere. I put it all together, I delivered it. And with my team, we were getting feedback from the brands about how amazing it was and the um, visitors that were going. And I just couldn't believe that we'd actually all done it. And the team, they knew that every bit they put into it was gonna make or break it. And they felt um, just as proud of it as I was. And that was quite an amazing moment when I realized I'd managed to do it. Yeah, that gives me goosebumps. Um, so, and I think the main things we were talking about this yesterday is um, it's that feeling of acknowledgement as well from the outside world. So not just feeling pr proud of yourself, but actually getting, when you start to get acknowledgement from other people that you are this business owner and you've done it and you've achieved something, it's a great feeling. So we're just going to, um, I don't know how long we've got left. I'm assuming we're, we're good. Um, so we're going to try to leave you with a couple of pieces of, um, of advice. And the, the first thing is I'm going to ask the panelists for um, one piece of advice that they would give to any of the women sat in this audience today or, or listening to this, um, and thinking about going off and doing the same thing. Anybody of you harboring these dreams about going off and launching your own business, what piece of advice would you, you give Kate? Um, so, two, I think we all spoke, uh, we've all spoke yesterday, um, we've all had mentors and coaches. I think that's, that's a real uh, key thing to do, just to just helps bring you outside of yourself. And also with me having a business partner, it was helpful to have one, somebody to help me goal set, um, which was really key. The other thing I would say is don't be put off by assuming that you are going to have to work 24-7. Um, which I think is, is a big myth that is, is portrayed out there. Uh, you don't have to, you, you're in control, you set your own terms and actually I feel my work-life balance is far better than it was when I was working for a big corporate organisation because you're not at someone's beck and call all the time. And Laura Lee? Um, yeah, I definitely second, I've, I've said it a few times throughout this, is get a coach, get a mentor. Um, you know, if you are at that stage where, you know, you have this burning desire and you just can't take the next step, it really helps to have somebody to, yeah, just, just to show you the path. I always, 
<laughs> I was a bit of a catastrophizer. I don't know if that's a word. But, you know, in my head, I thought the worst case scenario, I'm going to leave my job. I'm going to be homeless on the streets. Like, if it doesn't work out, it's just going to be terrible. My daughter's not going to have food. Um, you know, and my coach was like, no, you're just, you're just going to get another job. I was like, oh, okay. But there really is, like, there's no limit. If you do it and it fails, then you've still got something. You've never really failed. So, yeah, just, just do it. No, I mean? I won't say what you've already sp spoken about, um, but done is better than perfect if you're waiting to start when you're ready you might be waiting for ages and like messy is better than perfect as well so just get it done um, because remember you're going to grow on this journey and you're going to continuously evolve this industry continuously evolves so just just do it like it's better than that and it's one of those things as well like as women we're a lot more scared to do things so I think there's a statistic where like men will apply for jobs if they've only got 30% of the skills listed where women won't apply unless they have a hundred percent of the skills listed so that just says something about us but yeah just go ahead and do it I won't swear again <laughs> and Sam it's the same as everybody else's. It's, uh, my, what stopped me for such, so many years was my confidence. I had the stuffing knocked out of me, the confidence knocked out of me, and I thought that if I tried to do this, then something awful was going to happen. Um, and I had a coach as well. Um, but secondly, because everyone said about a coach, um, it, surround yourself with um, people or someone that you know you can potentially work with because when you start out and it's only you, it's very, very, very lonely. And I was lucky enough that um, one of my old team was looking for a job at the same time as I was starting out. She joined me in my, my living room and she helped me set it up. And um, she was amazing. And it was so good to have somebody else there that I could talk to and bounce ideas off of and check that I wasn't going completely mad. And we kind of grew together as we, as we built it up. So finding somebody you can do that with is a really good idea too. And I, I thought it was really interesting. I didn't do this for myself, but I thought what was really interesting when we spoke yesterday is all four of you actually did have a coach or mentor, which I think is really, like, I, I had never even, I'd never considered that, but you all told me yesterday that that was a really important step in building your confidence to actually make, make the move. And it took a year of me having <laughs> my coach to actually make that leap, it took that long, but she did she gave me the confidence to go you know what's the worst that can happen like these ladies have said it all goes pear shaped go and get yourself a job the fear was that i wouldn't have enough money or i wouldn't be able to contribute to my mortgage um and she said well you can because you can just go and get a job if you if it's not working um yeah so i thought that was quite an, an interesting piece of advice so we're going to finish before we take questions um we've got one more piece of advice uh, this is going to be my favorite bit so every single woman that you see here did actually have a career and was an, uh, was an employee of a, of a business. Three of us worked for large exhibition organizers. Narmeen and Laura Lee have worked in other uh, uh, parts of the events industry. And we all left those businesses to set up on our own. So we wanted to um, finish off before we take uh, Q&A on giving those businesses a piece of advice of how you're going to re retain and nurture your female talent uh, in the future so that they don't all leave and set off on their own like we did so um should we start with sam <laughs> oh gosh um okay oh, i've got a couple sorry <laughs> um Actually, for the women that are in, well, women need to be in senior positions. And for those women that are in senior positions, they need to um, not um, behave in a way that they think they should behave because that's how people have before. Um, you know, it's not about the time you put in, it's about the output that you give. Um, and I think the businesses need to trust, not just the women, but trust people to do the job they're doing. It's not based on the amount of hours you're seen to be doing. It's absolutely in your output. But I think particularly, you know, yes, it's about having women in senior positions, but those women, you know, I've had times in my life where I've had um, women bosses who have been a lot harder to work for than male bosses because they are feeling like they have to be and portray a certain, um, a certain style in a certain way when really they don't. And now me? Yeah, I completely agree. Sometimes, like, the women that we've had in positions of power have sometimes been 
if not as worse as men. But definitely fostering and creating inclusive environments, um, ones where that we feel that we are open to talk. Um, you know, I've got a story of mental health, and my co last company was incredibly, incredibly bad with it. Um, but yeah, just finding these places, like creating environments that we feel safe in and providing us the tools that we can excel in because a lot of the times we are held back and I can say that from experience. It's actually allowing us and supporting us to move forward. So creating inclusive environments and creating environments that we can thrive in. Laura Lee? Yeah, I echo what everyone says. Um, I guess I would add just to create a framework that really supports women um, not just women all of your employees like understanding what their needs are and, and how you can support them um, because what's really obvious is that your best talent doesn't work in your business anymore your best talent has gone and started their own business so you know imagine if you were still able to retain that in your business how how far you would go so just yeah create everything that's needed from the get-go so you don't lose them. Okay. Yeah, so I have a few as well. <laughs> so uh, first one would be uh, flexibility. And I think, you know, the pandemic, obviously a lot of bad stuff's happened because of the pandemic. But the one thing it has proven is people can be productive working remotely. And I, I think that understanding that, that flexibility and having that trust in your employees is really important. You don't you don't have to be hanging over their shoulder every five seconds. They will get the work done. Um, secondly, transparency of pay I think is really important. Um, Making everyone knowing um, what everyone else is on. I think it's really important. I don't know why it's it's all so secret. Um, I do. <laughs> <laughs> and. I think uh, the, the final thing is just understanding that, that there was, I don't know, I, I left my um, company like eight years ago now, but there was a divide, like a perception in, in the company that uh, women didn't do the commercial side or women couldn't be commercial. And I think that that is a huge oversight. Um, and hopefully I've demonstrated that, you know, I actually can do the commercial stuff because of run my own business and but I, I think that that's a little bit of a stereotype that does um, permeate a few businesses thank you so that's the um, that's the last of our our discussion so we're gonna yeah do you want to do that Matt's gonna take some of the questions so that was amazing discussion guys and I know um, Tamar you said um, did have a career I know I've worked with a few of you, but I'm constantly inspired by what you do. So don't say you did, because I think you're doing, and I think everything they talked about right now hopefully will inspire everyone else to sort of take that step. Um, there was one question that was text to me that's not on the board. Um, Narmeen, top secret events, are you a spy? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, it's an event that um, I actually came up with at the end of last year, but just never got round to getting myself together. But I can safely say um, that I am getting myself organized. My wonderful, wonderful team member, Rodrigo, has been working hard on it. And hopefully we can announce what the event is by the end of the year. Okay, amazing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, there's quite a few questions. Um, I think this is a really good one, because I know I've been through this in the last year, but running a business is incredibly tough. Where does your emotional support come from? Is it from the industry networks or home friends, other groups, like you have women in exhibitions, Kate, maybe? Yeah, so this was a big one for me, uh, personal development wise. Um, and I, I got to a point where I, I was incredible, I was feeling really, really lonely and I didn't know who to turn to. And actually started reaching out to Tamar and other uh, female, yeah, and Katie and, and actually creating your own network. So just reaching out and you understand that there's lots of people in the same position as you, um, but you do need somebody that understands what you're going through and the stresses and the strains. It's a whole different experience, a different conversation. So that is really important to build that network around you. And so, I mean, there's another question about top tips for, from, for someone starting. I know there's another woman founder um, in the audience, and 
they have been bringing on their own staff and the kind of the new change to freedom and flexibility and being able to work from home and having kids or not having kids and maybe having COVID or maybe not having COVID. Um, <laughs> Sam, maybe because you talked about family as well, like how do you manage, I guess, the staff or team expectation or people's expectation and, and actually getting work done? People's expectation of me? Of, of, uh, sorry, your expectation on people that you're working with or, or employed? Um, I think when you're starting up your own business, getting, because you don't, I mean, I, at the most, I haven't has, got as many now because of COVID, but I had five, six employees. Um, and when you're a small business, getting the right people on board is so important. I had a few that weren't, they didn't last very long because it can make a massive, massive difference. But if you're confident in who you recruit, you've got to trust them to be able to do the job. And I, you know, I have my own business. If I need to go and pick up the children from school and then I go home and do a bit of work from home, that's how I work. And I will be the same, and I am the same with my team. If they need to go to the doctors or they say, look, I could really do with working home from home today, or I am trying to, you know, I want them to trust me, so I have to trust them in exactly the same way. And as long as the work's getting done, I really don't care where and when they work. Um, okay, and Laura Lee, maybe, because you deal with speakers and such like, um, how important is it to network within the industry? And I guess actually more so, how important is it, or how do you get your face in front of people to know, hey, I'm here, I exist, this is what I do? You just have to put yourself out there. Um, reach out to people that you wouldn't necessarily speak to otherwise. Do your research, um, align with businesses and companies that share the same values as you, that are kind of on the same trajectory. Um, as Narmeen said, most people are really willing to help. Um, I, I don't think I've, I've come across, actually only one person I have come across who wasn't very helpful, but um, <laughs> there's always one. Uh, but you know, other than that, the, the, yeah, the, the people that I have found have just been incredibly helpful. And what happens as well is they open up their network to you. Um, and they'll introduce you to people that they think will be useful to you and vice versa. Before you know it, you just have this blossoming contact book um, and it's wonderful, it's incredible. And I think that's hopefully what the past kind of year those networks have built. I know with what you guys have been doing with Women in Exhibitions of supporting each other, I think hopefully that continues to blossom and opportunities like this come up to be in front of people and sharing your experience. So I think that is all we have time for. So thank you so much to Tamar and team um, for your time today.